it's Tina and I am back and I am here with a review and swatch video for the brand new Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Contour Quads that recently debuted at Sephora. They're available now on Sephora online and they're also available in store so definitely check your store to see if they have them on the shelves right now. But I am going to jump into a swatch and review video for you guys and I'm actually going to do a demonstration as well so I can show you how these apply to the eyes so you can get a sense for how these work and to see if you're interested in checking these out yourself. Now on the Sephora website it says step up your contoured eye looks with the shade and light eye contour quad. Featuring four specially curated palettes with matte shades, these quads spotlight Kat Von D's high pigment, silky and blendable eyeshadows in a covetable coffin shaped palette. Bring out the best in your eyes with a neutral base and then use the contour, define and highlight shades to create your ideal eye shape. Each quad includes an easy to follow how to insert illustrated by Kat Von D so you can lift, define, widen and narrow eyes with color. Now price wise these palettes retail for $26 and they include four shades. The largest shade here the base shade is 0.09 ounces and the other three shades are 0.04 ounces. And size wise you're getting the amount of eyeshadow you would in about five small eyeshadow pans that are available on the market so we're talking about the MAC Pro pans, the Makeup Geek eyeshadow pans, the Anastasia Beverly Hills small pans, the Urban Decay eyeshadow pans, those small eyeshadows, you're gonna get the size of about five of those eyeshadows in this quad. Even though there are four shades, this shade here is about double the size of a small eyeshadow pan. And at $26 for the quad, each of these shades break down to about $6.50 a piece. The price for me seemed to be in line with the typical Kat Von D pricing. I mean, her single eyeshadows retail for $20. $21 each and you get 0.1 ounce of product so it seemed in line with her price point to price these quads at $26 but then when you compare it to her shade and light eye contour palette where you get 12 shades for $46 the price seems a little bit off because it's more expensive but consider that quads are typically higher priced per ounce than a larger size palette. Overall I do think the quads are at a good place in her pricing structure where they're a little bit more expensive than her single eyeshadows but they're a lot cheaper than her eyeshadow palettes. But if you're looking for a better value, obviously you would go with her larger palettes, which do cost a lot less per ounce. Now let's go ahead and jump into the swatches of the quads that I picked up. I have three of the quads. I have the Sage palette, which is meant for brown eyes, so my eyes perfectly. Then you have the Rust quad, which is meant for blue eyes. And you also have the Plum quad, which is meant for green eyes. Now that doesn't mean if you have a different color eye that you can't use any of these palettes. Mix and match as you see fit, but I'm gonna jump into the swatches now so you can see the colors and see if any of these color themes appeal to you. So I'm gonna be swatching these eyeshadows over a very light layer of primer and for the swatches I'm gonna be using the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Contour Brush and I'll be using the denser part of the brush for the swatching. And the first quad up is the Plum Quad, which is matte purples for green eyes. And here's a look at the four shades in the quad. We'll start out with the base shade. Next to that, we have the deepest color, which is the Define shade. Then we have the medium shade, which is the contour color. And then the last color in the quad would be the highlight shade. Here we have the Plum Palette, and the first color I'm going to swatch is the base shade. This color is a pinky peach tone beige shade and it actually blends in nicely with my skin so this would be great for blending in the crease area. The next shade is the Define shade and this is a dark redden tone burgundy shade. And it is a little stiff in the pan, it does take some building up to get color onto the brush and then it does apply a little bit patchy and you do have to build it up to get smooth, opaque color payoff. This one I can foresee being a little bit tricky. Next we have the contour shade, which is a subdued mauve brown shade. It's like a purple tone brown and it applies nicely, as you can see, in one layer. And then last up we have the highlight shade from the palette, which is a pinky ivory shade. 
This color also picks up pretty decently. I didn't have to pick up too much color to get that color payoff that you see there. So here's a look at the shades in the Plum Quad. As I said, the Define shade is the only one that was a little bit tricky to build up. It was a little stiffer in the pan and had a drier texture than the other three. The two shades, the base and the contour shades, are the best performing for me in this one. And the highlight shade is not too bad either. And then let's take a look at the Rust Quad, which is matte brownish reds from Blue Eyes. And here again are those four shades laid out in the Rust palette. And the largest shade is the beige shade, which is a peachy beige, followed by a warm caramel brown, a bold orange for the contour shade, and then a warm ivory for the light shade. We're going to start out with the beige shade, which is a peachy tone beige. This one takes a little bit of building up and it feels a little bit more like a satin than a true matte shade. Then we have the Define shade, which is a orangey toned warm espresso brown shade. It's a beautiful shade and it builds up quite nicely. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous brown shade. And we have the contour shade, which is a matte rusty orange shade. And this one has good pigmentation and it's another one of those shades that people have been loving lately. So if you're interested in shades like these, I think this quad is definitely something to check out. And then last up, we have the highlight shade, which is a yellow toned ivory shade. And this one is not a complete matte. It has some very fine micro shimmer throughout it. It is definitely a beautiful shade, but it's a little loose. As you can see, the powder does kick up a bit. It applies nicely, but it's not gonna give you full pigmentation. It's more of a sheer highlight shade. And here again is a look at the Rust Quad. This one is a nice palette, but I think the base shade and the highlight shade are going to be the ones that are a little bit troublesome because they aren't opaque colors they're very sheer as you can see so depending on how you use them or how you intend to use them on the lids they may not be the best eyeshadows for you but if you're into that sheer eyeshadow they're not bad and then the two deeper shades do completely make up a little bit for the other two and then last up let's look at the sage palette which is matte greens for brown eyes and here are those four shades in this palette. They're more on the neutral and greeny side. We have a yellow ivory base shade, a deep dark green defined shade, a khaki taupe gray shade for the crease, and a yellow ivory highlight. So the first color I'm going in with again is the base shade. This one is a creamy caramel base shade. This is actually a perfect blending shade for my skin tone. So if you are a deep tan skin tone. This is a perfect crease transition shade for you. It applies really nicely, but you won't see the pigmentation on my skin because it blends in so well with my skin color. Next, we have the Define shade, which is a matte, deep forest green shade. I really love this color, but I will say it comes off almost blackened the way it swatches on my skin. So you won't see too much of the green and depending on your undertones, this can come off almost like a complete matte black shade. And it does have pretty decent color payoff. It's a little bit choppy, but as you build it up, it does cover up the patchy spots. Next we have the contour shade, which to me is like a khaki brown shade. It has a ivory undertone to it. It's a very neutral brown. It has a gray undertone and a little bit of a green undertone. So for me, it's really like a khaki shade. It builds up very nicely on my skin. As you can see, it has pretty decent color payoff. And then last in the palette, we have the highlight shade, which is a matte yellow toned ivory shade. This one takes a little building up but it's a highlight shade so depending on how you use it you might not need full color payoff it's more of a sheer color here on my skin so here again is a look at the sage quad and this is the one that i was most excited about because i knew that base shade was going to be a perfect transition blend in shade for me and i was really excited about the dark green shade however it does look like a matte black on my skin it doesn't really show up as true green so if I want that green to stand out, I'm going to need to use a colored green base on my lid. So we're going to see how this applies 
and determine if I truly love it. So I know one of the major questions will be, how do these shades compare to the Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette? Like, if you have this palette, do you need any of these quads? And I think the one that compares the closest is the Rust Quad. And as you can see, there are two similar shades in the Shade and Light Palette. Obviously though, these shades are more warm toned, more orangey toned than the ones in the Shade and Light palette. And the highlight shade is also very similar to three of the highlight shades in the Shade and Light palette. It comes closely to this shade right here. It's very similar in tone, but they're not exactly the same. The Shade and Light one is a little bit more light toned and the one in the rust palette is a little bit more of a yellow ivory as you can see. And even the yellow ivory shade in the shade and light palette is not exactly the same but they do look very similar. The next one I think you can compare is the sage palette. The highlight shade looks very similar. This yellow highlight shade looks similar to the highlight shade in the palette here. And then the contour shade looks very similar or like an in-between shade between this base color and then this little contour shade right here. So they're similar colors. Even the base shade in the palette kind of lines up, but they're not exactly the same. And I feel like the quads have richer color than the actual shade and light palette. I think the shade and light palette went a little bit more light neutral and then the quads went a little bit richer in color. Here you have the two yellow toned highlight shades. Again, the one in the Sage palette is a little bit more yellow toned, a little bit richer in color. But honestly, once you apply them to the skin, they look very, very similar to each other. And then you have the contour shade, which again, looks very similar to the base shade in the palette. So that's from the quad and that's from the palette. All of them are nice shades, but they're not completely exactly the same. And here are the two base shades. Again, the one in the quad for me is a richer, more caramelly toned shade. And then the one in the palette is a much lighter shade. And then last up, let's look at the Plum Palette, which I think is the one that is the furthest from the Shade and Light Palette. There are no real cool tone purpley shades in the palette itself and the quad is just filled with purpley tones. So none of these shades are even similar. These are more pinky hues. These are more neutral and warm tone shades. Now that you've seen the swatches, I wanted to do something a little bit different for this review. I actually wanted you to see these eyeshadows in action because I think that will give you a real life feel of how these eyeshadow quads perform and you know to see if there's something that you would actually want to try out on yourself or you just be like you know what no i'm good so i'm gonna jump into the demonstration and i'm gonna demonstrate each of these quads on my eyes i'm gonna follow along with the instruction guide that's included in each of the boxes and show you how i would apply these in a typical way but it's not gonna be the neatest application so let's just jump into it so we're gonna go ahead and test out the plum palette and I'm going in with the base shade first and I'm going to apply that all over the crease and this is not going to be a very neat application at all I just want to see how the shadows apply and as you can see it's a little bit dusty and powdery so be sure to shake off the excess and I am using an eyeshadow primer I'm using the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish primer and I'm just going to buff that all over my lid and let's see if I build it up. It does build up, so the little insert says to apply this all over the lid up to the crease. So that's what I'm doing. Then it says to grab the highlight shade. So I'm going to pop that right on my inner tear duct area. And it says also to pop it under your brow. As you can see, it's a very stark, light, pinky ivory color. And applying it beneath my brow really makes it look ashy on my skin tone but nonetheless press on so I'm just building that up on my inner tear duct area to see how it builds up again this is one of the shades that I was questioning because it is a very sheer shade so let's see if it builds up and you can build it up and definitely if you use a base down before I can see that you can build that up so that's good 
Then it says to grab the contour shade and apply it to the outer V and outer crease area. So I'm just going to use a blending brush for this and build this up on the outer lid and outer crease. And that color does deposit pretty nicely. And let's see how it blends. It also blends out pretty well without any harsh lines. Okay, that's good. And last, it says to grab the defined shade along the upper and lower lash line. What I'm gonna do is grab the same blending brush and just build it up on my outer V area to see how that builds up because typically people will use the darker shade in the outer V to build up dimension. So if it works there, most people will appreciate the shade. And I was worried it was going to be patchy, but as you can see, it's building up. It just, I do have to pick up a lot of the color to layer it and build it up. Let's see if it applies on the lid well. And I'm using a fluffy brush, which is not the ideal brush to get color payoff. It's really just a blending brush. And it's still picking up decent color. So... I think overall this color even though it worried me a little bit I think it is usable I think it will build up as you can see applying it I'm using the shade and brush now that I used before and the color does pick up on the lid and I don't have a base on I just have a simple primer on so if you have a base on you can definitely make this work see this is somewhat of a smoky eye so I think this color and this palette will definitely perform the lighter shades I wouldn't use as a highlight as you can see is very stark but be careful of that purple shade though the dark shade I do think you're gonna need a sticky base to build that up and I'm afraid of the fade in throughout the day because it's a drier formula and it doesn't um really build up that great but it still can build up so I think this one will be tricky but it's definitely workable as you can see I wanted to show you how much powder you do kick up when you press into these eyeshadows you do pick up quite a lot of product so you have to be sure that you tap your brush off so you don't get fallout on your skin and then you know kind of clean out the palette because you're gonna be left with a mess after you try to get color up on your brush especially if you use a fluffier brush it's gonna kick up color all over the place so be careful with that alright so now let's go ahead and try out the sage palette and I'm gonna grab the base shade which is that caramelly neutral tone and this one I have high hopes for because this is the color that I'm most excited about using as a transition shade and perfect it does apply really nicely again it's powdery it's loose so you're gonna kick up some powder as you apply this or you can make sure you knock off your brush to get the excess product off this shade is nice Applies really well perfect now we're gonna go in with the highlight shade I'm just gonna pop that on a denser brush this highlight shade actually picked up pretty well in the swatches so I don't expect there to be an issue here okay it's a little bit powdery so it does dust off a bit so it's applying a little bit more sheerly than I expected but again using a base will help to build this color up let's see if we can build it up on the crease on the inner tear duct I mean okay it doesn't really build up but again use a base with that we'll see how that goes it doesn't really build up the pink one built up a lot more than this one is building up actually and now we're gonna go ahead and grab the contour shade as you can see the powder is very loose I knocked off quite a bit of excess right there as you can see that is a lot of extra loose powder so now let's see apply this to the crease and build it up using a blending brush it's a very neutral light shade on my skin tone but it is showing up and it is building up definition in that outer crease area do like that actually like that shade it's a very wearable crease shade for me okay and now let's go in and really test out the shade that I'm excited about which is this green shade we'll see how this works so typically you would apply this kind of shade this deep dark shade on the outer V outer crease area and it applies uh, pretty decently 
and I'm going to try to blend it out and as you can see it kind of fades away pretty quickly and it does get patchy. So we're going to try to build up this color and see how it goes. Now I'm going to go back into the color and try to pack some of this on the lid. Again, I'm using a fluffy brush so this is not going to really pack on the color but I'm just trying to see if the color will build up at all. And it applies decently but it is definitely patchy. You don't have full opaque color. There are definitely some gaps. And it does show up green on my lid and if I apply a green base, I'm sure it will show up even greener. And I can cover any patchiness. The two palettes have performed decently except the lighter highlight shade is a little bit, eh, it's a little sheer. But for a highlight color, I don't necessarily need full opacity from it. So it's not a bad performance shade at all. Now I'm going to clean off one of these eyes and go in with the rust palette. Alright, so let's go ahead and figure out how the rust palette is going to fare. I'm going to go in with the base shade. And this shade is more of a pinky peach. Again, just buffing that in the crease. I think this shade, the base shade and all the palettes kick up quite a lot of dust. Especially on this brush that I'm using. So be sure to just knock off the excess off the brush. Um, this color goes on a little bit sheerly. I don't think it's that impressive, but if you're just using it as a blending transition shade, you see how much powder is like kicking up all over the place? But if it's just a blending shade, it shouldn't be much of an issue. Now let's grab that highlight shade and pop that on the inner tear duct. I'm feeling like all the highlight shades are a lot more sheer than I would like. I would like them to have a little bit more punch so I could build them up if I wanted like a really light lid I could build them up but so far they're looking like they're the sheerer colors of the bunch you see that one just blends away not too fond of that but we're gonna press on and grab the orangey shade which is the contour shade and I don't want to pick up too much of this color because I am afraid it's gonna be intense and it is. You can just use very little of this shade. Wow, it really picks up nicely. As you can see. And it's a nice rusty orange, so it adds a pop of warmth without being too overwhelming. Okay. And it's not sheer, it's not patchy. Perfect. Now let's grab the Define shade. And I have high hopes for this shade because, oh, I think that brush is a little wet. Yikes. Okay, I got a different brush, but that damp spot's gonna cause an issue. But anyway, this color I have high hopes for because it is such a rich, beautiful brown shade. And beautiful. It's such a beautiful, warm, like, fudgy, brownie shade. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. And it doesn't, it builds them nicely without being patchy. Look, it's like a smooth, even, even tone. Very beautiful. I left the purple one on a little bit longer because I wanted to see how it would look. And it does have a little fade in and patchiness. So that one, I would say, keep an eye on that one. Watch that one. I'm not too sure that one's the best one to pick. But this one, oh. That is really beautiful. So there you go. We did the application test for all three of these palettes. So let's go ahead and wrap up the review. Now let's talk packaging. So here's a look at the outer box that the quads are housed in. They are color themed to match the quad that they house. So this one is the plum quad and it has purple lettering in signature Kat Von D font. And the shade and light eye again has that purple lettering. You'll also find the ingredients on the box as well as on the back. You'll see the shades outlined as base, defined contour and highlight. Inside the box you'll see a little star signature which I thought was a cute touch because her tattoos on her face are little stars. And inside the box you have a little look card here that describes how you can create different looks from the palette. It describes where to put the base shade, the contour shade, the define shade, and the highlight shade. It's the same in every box, so it doesn't differ by the color theme. It's just the same, and it just goes by base, contour, highlight, and define. And the palettes themselves are housed in hard black plastic packaging, 
with a embossed raised font on the front that said shade plus light eye in black and gold with the Kat Von D logo. I thought this was so beautifully done. It's excellent. And then on the back you have a little label in the color theme of the palette. So this is the green palette and it's the sage palette and the label itself indicates which shadows are base, highlight, contour, define and highlight. And then inside you have a little mirror with the little cutout that is signature Kat Von D as well with her logo in the mirror. And the clasp is a tab fit closure. So it secures really well because of that tab. It's not magnetized. So you can rest assured that this palette will stay securely closed. The little mirror is a nice touch but I don't see it being very usable because of that little cutout design. It's not really functional for applying makeup. But... I really love how this palette was done. It was really beautifully created. And there are those little signature Kat Von D touches that really makes them unique and special. It's a really beautifully made palette. Right. Now you've seen swatches, you've seen a demonstration. Now let's jump into the actual review and my thoughts of the eyeshadow formula and their performance. And honestly, I am a lot torn on this because I wanted to love these so much because they're matte eyeshadows and they have nice deep defined shades and I'm like yes it's gonna be awesome and the quad that I was most excited about is the sage quad which has this deep dark green and it has this caramelly brown base shade I was like perfect this is gonna be great for my eye color and also for my complexion because this base shade really matches my complexion well and I tried to love them I really did but just applying them and just how powdery the formula is, I am just not the biggest fan. So you saw the performance of them as I was applying them. They do kick up a lot of powder. They're very loosely packed, which honestly sometimes is not always a bad thing because really pigmented eyeshadows tend to be a little bit looser, a little bit pro more prone to fallout, just because they have more pigment versus binding ingredients. But you have to find a happy medium where you're okay with the pigmentation and also the application. And for these, I feel like they fell short. They just kicked up far too much powder, too much product. A lot of loose product was all over the palette. And when you tap your brush in there, it picks up a lot of dust and particles. And as you apply it to your lids, you'll see the dust just kind of fly all around the particles. The eyeshadow is just floating all around. And with that, you end up getting patchiness and you don't get the full pigmentation because as you start blending, the eyeshadows kind of fade away on your lids. And you can definitely use a stickier base. You can use a base that is going to really help these eyeshadows to adhere to the skin. But with that, you also run into the issue of them getting the little moist spots on your skin. Because if you use a really moist primer that's going to definitely cling to the eyeshadows, then you run into the issue of having the colors darken a bit and change in consistency and the blendability is going to be different because you now have a stickier base down. So they take a lot of work to get them to really perform and I feel like with the great matte eyeshadows that we have on the market these days, these fall short of being spectacular and there are some spectacular matte eyeshadows on the market. The Anastasia Beverly Hills matte eyeshadows, her ultra matte eyeshadows are extremely blendable, they have great pigmentation, and they're not powdery and loose. They stick to the lids. So you have those. You have the Makeup Forever Matte Eyeshadows, which are divine. I think the Anastasia Beverly Hills price point is a little bit more aligned with the Kat Von D price point. But you even have MAC eyeshadows that are now $6 a piece for each of the little pans. And those are also really good matte eyeshadows. So I feel like if you really want to try these out, I think they're beautifully packaged. I think the presentation is phenomenal. And if you're willing to put in the extra work, they're not god-awful. But they're not something that I would say run out and get. You would have to honestly be interested in Kat Von D products and not mind putting in a little bit extra elbow work to get those to work for you. Overall, it's kind of like a eh. I don't think they're god awful, I don't think they're just not worth your money, but I also wouldn't recommend them for beginners or people that just want an easy, breezy, no fuss formula, especially when there's such great alternatives now on the market. So 
those are my two cents. Let me know what you guys think if you have tried these out, if you're going to try these out, or you're just like, you know what, no, I'm good. I don't want to put that much effort into making an eyeshadow work for me. Let me know in the comments below, and as usual, I'll leave links to where you can check these out, as well as links to my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook page. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.